water retention and TRT, is it something that, that happens? If it happens, what might be causing them? And what, we, what can we do? We'll find out after this, so keep watching. Hello and welcome back to another Balance My Hormones video. We've got Dr. George Tuliatos and Nelson Virgil here today. Hi guys, thanks for coming on. Thank you. So we've got a few topics that we're going to discuss, sort of talk around, get opinions on. Um, the first topic is about water retention and TRT. So it's a common discussion. Does TRT cause water retention? Do its metabolites, estrogen, things like that? Do they contribute? What are the mechanisms? So water retention and TRT, is it something that, that happens? If it happens, what might be causing them? And what we what can we do? I mean, Nelson, do you wanna do you wanna start off potentially with, yeah, with that? Yeah, it's it's not a very common side effect, um, gladly and luckily, but I've seen more and more guys on the Facebook group that I moderate and also on excelmail.com um, complain about it. And uh, I've been trying for years to find a common element to all those um, you know all those people. And it's been almost impossible. The first response, uh, the first question they ask is, I've gained 15 pounds in a month, in my first month. Uh, is this normal? And obviously, and I ask them, are you eating more? No. So it's not obviously increased caloric intake, right? So, um, and then they start complaining about like puffiness, puffy face. So we know basically it's, it's usually water uh, gain. So, um, and the first response, the first reaction I think I get from a lot of the guys online is that they think it's estrogen, increased estrogen, because there's this belief that, you know, women hold water, especially through their menstrual cycle and all that, and that it is the estrogen that is increased. And, and none of them, very few men actually check their estrogen levels, estradiol, we should be very specific. Um, and that they assume it's, it's, it's estrogen and they start taking higher doses of anastrozole or, you know, aromatase inhibitors, which in my experience, I mean, in 30 years of reading and watching, I've never only taken anastrozole once back in the days. Um, have never really seen like a reduction in water retention due to that, to that drug. So I wish it did happen. So, but it's very hard for men to not believe it's estrogen based, uh, this is what retention. The, the thing I've seen is, uh, the, you know, yes, diet has something to do. The high, you know, carbs tend to increase water retention, especially at the beginning of TRT. But there's something that actually happens with not only testosterone, but also with other uh, androgens like nandrolone and, and others that actually affect the metabolism of sodium in the kidneys and uh, the water, uh, the body tends to hold up more sodium. Um, and the more sodium the, water, the body holds, the more it requires water to dilute it. So we don't become, you know, we don't actually go into extremely high sodium level. So we hold more water to dilute the sodium that we're not excreting. And, and that's when it gets tricky. Okay, what do we take? What do we do? Usually, for me, because I'm working, I'm, I'm, since I only have, there's only one animal study that I looked at on the effects of testosterone and aldosterone and sodium. And obviously they, they have a link there, but human studies have been lacking. Uh, for me, what's worked because I do, but that's my problem usually. Um, I hold water easily. <laughs> I'm an older man. I've been on testosterone for 35 years and 61. So obviously I'm not your healthy, normal, um, young men on testosterone. So I remind people of that, but I do hold one. So what I've seen, for instance, is that uh, salt intake, people say, oh, reduce your salt intake. That has worked. It really hasn't for me. What really has worked for me is cardio, cardiovascular exercise, sweating that sodium out, because that's the first thing that leaves our bodies. And, and going into a lower carb to no carb, a keto diet really has worked beautifully. I, I lost a lot of that water right away with a keto diet. So I'm convinced. Uh, when it gets really bad, I tell people, uh, especially the older guys, have to be very careful because water retention can also be linked to some cardiovascular vascular issues. And that's, that's not something to just take lightly, especially if you have 
uh, water retention edema in the swelling in the ankles. Um, that really, when that happens, and sometimes it's a post picture, so that's really when I'm concerned, and I really think, hey, you should go see your cardiologist, just to make sure that, you know, your, um, your vascular system is, is doing okay for that. So water retention is concern, and water retention, I think, something we don't discuss too much online in the forums. I think even in my book, in my first book, I didn't really address it at all. And I'm finding out more and more guys that are gaining a lot of weight. Obviously, they eventually lose it, that water weight in the first quarter of testosterone replacement. But it's very concerning for Benny. So I, the only thing I say, if it gets really bad, I, you know, treat me with a, a diuretic, you know, just you know, cycle a very short exposure to that, de decreasing your sugar intake, decreasing your, well, some people say decrease your salt intake. It hasn't really worked for me and exercise so much that uh, cardio that you actually sweat to decrease. And maybe even consider a real good keto diet because that definitely, I think out of all the things I've tried has really uh, managed my bloating the most. So that's, George, uh, you probably have a lot more to say about this too. No, I mean, Nelson said it all, but I want to point on aldosterone. All the steroids, including testosterone and derivative on androgenic anabolic steroids lead to this fundamental mechanism stimulating the kidneys to release aldosterone that retains sodium and as a result of this water. So this is how blood pressure increases, but also it's dose dependent, okay? Now we can block aldosterone through spironolactone. We know it's inhibitory and aldosterone retains sodium. So spironolactone excretes sodium and retains potassium. Uh, besides that, yes, I agree. Also estrogen sometimes were super high along with um, a high dose of testosterone may lead to uh, this kind of edema and puffiness. I used to remember, Chris, like when you used to say that taking one milligram of anastrozole then makes you to diarrhea the next day. Personally, I have not noticed this, but I had a one patient who's actually a psychiatrist, a friend of mine, and he told me that he had almost three digital estradiol and then of what, after taking one milligram of arimidex, then his puffiness in his ankles and in his face was gone. Uh, but I think it's aldosterone that makes you puffy and this kind of edema slightly elevates the blood pressure. Okay, and of course, DECA is notorious for this. Okay, because DECA through this mechanism lubricates the synovial cavities and smooths the joint aches in the shoulders, for instance. And of course, you, in order to excrete sodium, you can take more potassium from foods like bananas or, or potatoes, sauna, steam bath, sweating, low carb or keto diet, because taking off the carbs is kind of direct because carbs retain um, water in order to form the starch. So eating raw protein and, and fiber is kind of direct. So that's what bodybuilders do the final week before a uh, show in order to flush away, to flush all the the, re the, the retention, you know? So I guess it's this, yes, it's, it's aldosterone and allegedly estrogen, but it doesn't happen at all. And I, I think it's also dose dependent. So taking 100 milligrams of testosterone is not the same than taking 200 or 300, you know? So it's dose dependent. Yeah. So in theory, they could potentially just get more potassium in supplement wise, maybe early on, that, that could be something. Um, and I think like Nelson said, my experience over over the years of, of guys starting is if there is any water retention or, or, or weight gain in that sense that it does it does go away quite quickly it's almost like a in most guys just an adaptive response to the, the hormones changing and being restored um it's also i suppose the the word water retention is it, people always associate with sort of under the skin puffy face and things like that but but intramuscular water retention you know i'm sure is something right that that they have an effect on and, and and that's not always a bad thing right i mean i know weight can can vary i mean a lot of the anabolic steroids obviously with their immediate water retention within this the muscle. is how they work the steroids yeah they, they, they flash a lot of size they, they introduce um, into the muscle inter uh, muscular you know what mm. yeah, not so you might look more muscular because of a slightly fuller muscle and then but if you're just looking at the scales you know oh, i've had this weight gain this this is this must be fat or water underneath my skin actually you could be just actually changing that sort of water level inside the muscles yeah 
Yeah, and GH, growth hormone does the same. I mean, yes, yes, yes. Uh, extracellular water, intracellular water. Uh, there's actually a study, a very well done study in humans, thank God, in men, that they gave um, them growth hormone uh, and with and without testosterone. And obviously they did see increases and they measured their body composition with uh, DEXA and BIA. And they actually did see increases in extracellular water. But when they added testosterone, that increase was dramatic. So and especially uh, DECA also this combination yeah. of the three. So, and most people that use GH or even Androlon, um, obviously use it with testosterone. So there's an additive effect there uh, mm -hmm. too. That I think, you know, like I tell everybody, uh, the first six months of starting testosterone replacement is uh, very critical. That's why I think uh, it's good to have a good clinic that monitors you well. And because that's really when you determine a lot of the what's going to happen to you as a patient long term. I mean, the red blood cells go up, water retention can go up, blood pressure. PSA also sometimes rises in the first six, six months. Huh? Yeah, yeah. So the reaction is. The first six months are the, where you actually measure, where you are actually trying to find out what type of patient that is. Because in my case, for instance, my hematocrit, which is another topic that I don't know if we're jumping around, uh, sure. uh, increases um, during the first months for a lot of us, and then it stabilizes. And some men keep having hematocrit issues for a long time. So um, the first three to six months determines what kind of long-term patient you're going to be if you're one pe some people as you well know with sleep apnea or even sleep disorders or smoking or they're not getting enough oxygen through their day um, um, tend or to living have, in Colorado huh? uh, or, or high altitudes which you know the body adapts to that too and there's a matter grid but it's also a, a, a partial pressure difference in oxygen out there but um, that, that is the concerning aspect. And I do see it in, in a lot of the guys online. The water retention obviously combined with an increased viscosity in the blood uh, tends to cause more problems when it comes to blood pressure, like George was saying, and being out of breath, winded when you go up the stairs. Um, and I'm usually talking to the older guys at 45 up, okay? I think the younger guys, the younger you are vascularly, you're healthier, you're you're not suffering from a lot of those things. And we are, as you well know, because you're in the field, seeing a lot more younger men. Like I, I'm very surprised on my analytics when I look at my demographics on my mm. Excel mail and all the other stuff that I do, that the peak of traffic is men from 25 to 35. Yeah. And I really was expecting the peak to be 40 and up. Yeah. And yeah. it's not. So that's, that really is telling us, hey, wait a minute, either, you know, the, the, the low testosterone issue is becoming more prevalent, which I think George has seen a lot of data on that in the 20 somethings. And why is that happening? Obviously, that's another topic, but uh, it's concerning. And also the fact is that a lot of men are not having good monitoring clinics in the clinic. In the the yeah, they're like cookie cutter, they send them home. And now they don't even see you. They, they don't even measure your blood pressure. You're doing it on Zooming with people, telemedicine. I'm obviously mm -hmm. not against telemedicine. I think it's a great yeah. thing, but I'm very concerned. And I'm just saying yeah. that people That's say, why, you, why are you still doing this after, you know, I'm not a clinician. George is, I'm not. Uh, why are you still doing this? I said, because uh, I want to get out of this field, to be honest with you, when I'm not needed. But mm. 2020, we're still seeing the same issues we used to see even 10 years ago. Yeah, uh, when it comes to mistakes need made for a lot of these guys. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was one of the young people in their twenties that started TRT. I was, you know, twenty-two, and what I noticed early on was the I was always complaining about water retention. I'm a bit puffy in the face, and I mean, at, at the time it was uh, uh, testosterone injections, uh, sometimes nandrolone and cream, and um, yeah, that definitely brought some water retention. But as I've mentioned in previous videos, I also uh, had an issue with thyroid, uh, undetected, uh, maybe causing some mixed edema and, and water retention. I feel after treatment, some of the water retention has, has really dissipated a lot. Mm, I had that. I had, I had swollen ankles when my thyroid well, finally impacted. I have a question now. We know that in bodybuilding, bodybuilders use the cutting phase, use the fast ester of propionate. Do you think this uh, may contribute to lesser water retention if you TRT with propionate instead of enamphate or supionate or even undercounate? I noticed with testosterone creams, there was less water retention. 
Uh, so because the shorter acting, shorter duration of action, and you just keep reapplying it once or twice a day. And I imagine the same with propionate because you're, uh, you're injecting daily or every other day, uh, a smaller amount. And, it gets uh, rid of the system rapidly. You, in yeah. So you get a good onset of, of, of a fact and action, and then it leaves quickly without building up. So when we've seen guys who've done the testosterone sipionate at the microdose, um, you know, there's a whole another topic where they're, they're trying to do it to, to lower the estradiol level. And yet we're seeing massive buildup of estradiol as great, if not greater, as if they were doing twice a week injections. So I don't see any benefit with that particular ester. We're not necessarily seeing that with the test prop uh, because it's quick in, quick out, and same with the cream in most cases. Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Kara here in Houston, who is a very well-known urologist, uh, he's written a lot of the papers with Morgan Taylor on everything from prostate to you name it. He, uh, we have no data on that, but he believes enanthate is, is less prone to water retention. But I have to say, I've tried all of them. And uh, as I said, I'm not your typical patient, but I, I don't see a difference at all. Actually, propionate was the one that increased my blood pressure the, the, the highest. Uh, even at lower doses. So it's, it's a very personal thing. I don't think there's, I wish there was because it would be really good if we could just pinpoint one ester or even a sustenone or it would be great because otherwise we would not even be having this conversation. <laughs> but uh, the fact is I have not seen a problem. I don't, I think it's also patient specific. Uh, is it really the peak of testosterone or is it really the area under the curve? Um, nobody has really determined because there's so many other factors, the diet, exercise, genetics. Uh, we haven't even explored the genetic aspects. Of sodium it. intake also. You know, sodium intake, yeah. uh, uh, whether or not we were getting enough steps. You know, the, the, There's so many factors and the guys with sleep apnea definitely tend to have more problems. So I, I'm always looking for this more the this, this simplest of all answers because everybody wants simple answer. Everybody wants a black and white kind of answer. And unfortunately, in a lot of this field, there's not such a thing. There is, there, we, we know basic things like you know, doing more than 200 milligrams a week is, is, is a lot for testosterone replacement. You're going to have either issues with hematocrit, blood pressure, all that. So we know the dose range. Uh, we know what to follow, what to monitor. We know a lot of things. We've learned a lot in the past four years. There are all all the things that I don't think we've explored enough. Yeah, I, I think I think because of this, if some if you see somebody stating that they know an absolute way of doing something to cure a certain symptom or a certain anxiety, that right. really is it's either you know content creation, right, and they're trying to be polarizing, or it's maybe a sales thing to try and get them towards you. Because like you say, it's so it's so different you know, in person to person. So that was the water retention and TRT. Uh, thanks for your opinions, guys, and that information. So if you like this video, guys, please subscribe, click the notification bell, and um, comment underneath if there's anything that you'd like to uh, contribute. Thanks for watching. Cheers, guys, for joining.